Recording started. Um, this is an advanced coaching session um, for Fish Eyes and Just Commons uh, present here in this particular uh, session. It's uh, it's October 13, 2015, 7:24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A full disclosure: This is purely for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. So, Scott, continue with your question regarding the. You said, go ahead. Yeah, Harry had said that SPX needed to close above 2002, mm -hmm. and I didn't see that on anything where he pulled that from. I'm just curious if you could. Um, okay, I mean, I will. I will try. If I if we go back on my uh, Twitter feed and um, maybe he's talking about something that I mentioned earlier in the day. So let me just, I'm just scrolling back here to see any of the comments that I might have printed. I just, there's a lot of people sometimes that, you know, in, in passing that you hear say that this yeah. needs to hold this or forget it. It's, yeah, I'm mean, going it, to lose it. It's uh, I didn't see anything running at that range, you know, like a 50 or a 34 or a 21 the moving yeah. average or a fib or anything. Let me see here. Well, there's a 50% fib that's at about that point, but I'm just, I'm just scroll, scrolling through to see um, SPX. I'm look, pulling up my SPX charts on the other side. Market alerts. All right. I don't see anything on, on on that side, but let me let's go over this particular chart because it's um, these are very precise, and uh, Jim, you know, literally really manage all your trades of these things here. Let me just start off by saying this, guys. At this juncture in the market, you can you can basically do all kinds of uh, uh, hardcore technical analysis and stuff, but you're still going to get whipsawed if you're not quick enough. Okay. So today, for example, we had a fantastic hammer reversal. Let me let me zoom in that right, and by the end of the day, we actually have an outside day, which is considered at least if you just look at from a candle standpoint in a negative formation. All right. Now, saying all that, you know, you guys know by now uh, better than anyone else out there that I just don't look at the external structure and make up my mind whether or not this market is 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 done uh, for the week or 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 thing. I look at a lot of different things. Um, I look at the internals, I look at the seasonality of what's going on, and in this case, the weekly seasonality of monthly op options expiration. Um, I look to see a, a, a lot of different uh, sentiment indicators, uh, which are not just uh, whether people are feeling good or not feeling good, but more importantly, um, the put call ratios and the call put ratios. So I mix in all of that together. I look at my 533s, and I try to figure out what's going on. Because this is this this October is a month that um, that uh, that that's going to basically uh, uh, bend the technicals for a better choice of words, and uh, and then it's going to spew traders out. Um, so that's you know that's just pretty much what what this market's going to do. You know, and so it doesn't matter what levels we're talking about. Well, it does matter. It does matter. What, le uh, but. Um, but but it doesn't really. You can't be rigid. Let me just put it this way: you cannot be rigid. You have to be very flexible, and you're going to see huge volatility this month. I don't mean huge in the sense of um, 600 point type of volatility intraday, but I'm talking about intraday volatility like we saw today, where it started off negative, went hugely positive, and ended negative. Okay, and in and and in the interim, selected stocks and stuff. They held their ground because if you look to see what happened, they were they were a heck of a lot of greens on my screen. So this is not this is not a market, and I want you guys to really understand this. We are not in a market where it's a that where a full asset class, regardless of who they are, are going to be smashed down just because the market decided to give back um, give back a, a, a bunch of points. So you have to be very selective in the stocks, and that's why that's why if you've noticed. I am not going out there and saying blanket by this and blanket by that because I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out based on my experience which ones are going to fare best uh, during this earnings season. So here's my short list on on that stuff. 
I think Twitter's going to be fine. I think I think um, um, Amazon is going to literally, in my you know again, I can't say everything with it with disclosure. Or maybe I'm wrong. Let's let's put it this way. Maybe I'm going to be right. I mean, I've been right on that stock um, overall big time. I think the stock's going to go to 600, literally, and uh, and it, it, that's not going to happen. You know, because everyone looks for an easy way out, right? We all do. We just want to buy the thing and wake up after earnings and say, oh, my God, look at that 70 points up, you know. Um, I I just caution people that not to think like that because before it goes up 70 points, they might pull it down 30 points, okay. And that's just, just letting you guys know because they are going to basically make it very difficult. And when I say they, I mean the machines are going to make it very difficult for the average trader to make easy money. Just passing it on. And today was a prime example of that. You know Sorry, I'm munching on my um, on my cashews and stuff. So, um, so basically, um, just be aware of that, okay? So, so I think Twitter's going to be good. I think Facebook's going to be strong. I Priceline, we talked about it the other day. You know, it did what it did. Fantastic. Priceline, if they deliver the cards right, that stock is a $1,400 stock. What's 60 points for Priceline? Do you, does, people don't people forget that it's the only large cap tech that's still out there, which is still still has a split, and it's still above $1,000. So I'm just warning. I mean, I, I want people to really go short against these type of companies because because even if their numbers are somewhat weak and they say, well, we're, go we're, we're going to go out there and do a 6-1 six, six or a 10-1 to one split, stocks are just going to go berserk. And I always, every time I look at price price, and, and that's the only $1,000 stock in my screen, you know? So these things have to be taken into account. Um, I think Alibaba is going to deliver some decent numbers. And... It's going to be, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be hit or miss. Now, here's something I want you guys to understand from a standpoint of behavioral game theory, okay? Just because something's down on earnings means sh shit. It doesn't mean anything. Because of that, if that company is a company in favor, they're going to buy the crap out of it after it's down 40 bucks. This is one thing traders just don't seem to get. And I'm not even traders. I mean a lot of investors too. That fund managers, maybe because I've worked within the complex, I understand this, and I certainly do, is, is you just seem to understand that people just don't, you know, these, these managers who are managing billions of dollars, they are not just going to fall out of love with something. You know, traders can. Traders are fickle. We like something one day, we don't like it the other day. What does it matter? Because we're not buying like 10,000 shares of the stock. So the bottom line is that um, the bottom line is that uh, we uh, fund managers have a certain allegiance to companies. So that's why when people say, oh, yeah, Tesla, it's finished. It's going to go to $150. It's going to go to 100 I don't know what these guys are smoking because... People have a tendency to keep on getting burned with the, doing the same old stuff. And I'm sure a lot of guys got burned on Tesla today. And the stock was right for a move up. It's still right for a move up. It's good for 230 bucks. Easy. Easy. I did really well with Tesla the first round. Second round, I, I moved out and bought the, uh, the other uh, um, out, um, out of the money ones. So on that, on that, I was down about uh, 20%. On the first round, I think I think I, it was like almost almost a double. So, and the chart was perfect. I mean, it, the chart was perfect. I should have bought a lot based on that, but just the way it is. So, so a couple of things. Earnings season kicks off full blast, and we have to be very selective, stock by stock. And there is, and I repeat, just because something's down 40 points after hours. For 15 minutes, or let's say stays 40 points down, opens down and slips down another 10 points. I'm talking about the big cap stocks. I'm going to do a lot of tactical fast trading on those things. Because if they get down to levels where the technicals are sc is screaming by, 
then that's fantastic. Because remember one thing here. You guys, you know, you guys understand this better than most people. These managements of these companies are not some stupid idiots. They know very well that the street is very skeptical, very skeptical of earnings going into the fourth quarter. So they are going to temper their guidance, that's for sure. They're not going to lie to their teeth. And, uh, and, and, but they are not going to basically, uh, they're also going to make sure that they massage their numbers uh, for the third quarter to a level where it doesn't, where it's not a nasty, nasty negative surprise, okay? And, and these managements know that very well. They're not stupid. So, and I don't think any of these companies, to be honest with you, and the ones that I'm talking about, are really held hostage to whether or not there's a slowdown in China in a huge way or this and that. So you have to be very specific about the companies you're looking at. Amazon doesn't do any business in China. And, and a large portion of Amazon's business, <coughs> excuse me, is coming from AWS, the real profitable part of the business, which is Amazon Web Services. And their sales on Amazon, they probably blow the cover off their retail numbers on the top line. But then at the same time, on the bottom line, they don't really make money off retail. So that's not their, that's not their thing. So unless Amazon goes out there and say that they are, you know, they're uh, spent, going to spend another billion dollars doing some, you know, doing some sort of uh, acquisitions and things like that, that might, that might um, sort of put it, uh, 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 sort of put a break on the, on, on the move on the stock. But aside from that, they're going to be, I think they're going to be fine. And, and the, the worst thing anyone can expect is if the stock runs up to, uh, to 600, um, What's the high on the stock? The high on the stock is 580, right? So the stock runs up to 580 before earnings. That's like the worst thing. I hate it. You know, I hate stocks that run into earnings in a big way because then there is very, and you know, it's a mixed bag. I and mean, sometimes they run into earnings and they go up another, you know, 40, $50. But generally speaking, um, running into earnings in a big way can excite a lot of amateur traders, but I don't quite like it. You know, things things just you know start to look frothy at that point. I'd love the stock to stay around here. You know, 540, 550, you know, let it stay there. So that that's one. So saying all that, I will be, you know, I um uh, by tomorrow I'll I'll, I'll put together a list. I'll, I'm gonna highlight the companies that I'm looking at because I've got to look at a lot of different things before I go out there and put these earnings plays out there. But um but I think we should uh but I think we're gonna be okay. Because uh, for some for a broader reason, which you, you guys heard from me and you guys heard in, in the media, we, it's almost a negative five percent expectations for earnings growth for um, for the third quarter. So I mean, and and that is a very one of the lowest one of the lowest Wall Street estimates in many 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 years. And every time I've seen something like that such negative expectations, such heavy duty pessimism from the professionals, the quarter overall for companies and specifically tech companies have been, they've basically beaten the except, uh, expectations by miles. All right. So just keep, just keep that in mind. This is an expectations game. It is not a game of like, you know, um, absolutes. So if they beat the expectations, that's it. And, and, and then you're going to hear all the bozos from stock tweets and everyone sitting with, oh, their numbers were so bad. Because I always like to say, which is true, which I believe in. No one knows how to read these numbers. You think anyone does? No. You think the headline numbers really tell the full, a full story, good or bad, of the company? Absolutely not. And, 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 and looking at, oh, the P is so high. I mean, who gives a flying you-know-what? You know, whether a company's PE high, if a company is a high growth company and is doing things which are which are radically going to shape and change things and their revenue base is going to be exponential. Yep. The PE for Facebook was very high at 40 bucks, too. I mean, so that argument just never go there. Just never go there because it's not just PE. It's a lot of other stuff. And secondly, is we don't live in a world of like nirvana. We don't live in a world where everything's like, oh yeah, if it goes, if it does this, it's going to do that. No, it all depends on what the what the overall sentiment is by the big guys who buy these companies. Period. 
Did they feel this company's delivering? There's only a few places in the world left for growth, and technology is it. There's not many sectors out there that are growing double digits. In fact, there are none other than some niche companies in specific sectors. Aside from that, nobody's delivering 12, 13, 15% growth anymore. So growth managers are hungry, are hungry to, um, to um, add and, and nurture companies which are growing uh, despite everything, you know, are, are growing at that type of, uh, at that type of rate. So that's something, you know, keep that in mind. Anyway. So let's take a look at uh, of um, of this uh, of the S and P 500, and this one's pretty easy to read here. It really is quite easy. Then we'll look at the internals. So we have this bold flag here. It's kind of consolidation channel, whatever you call it, and we fell out of it. Okay, but it didn't do much. We fell out of it, but it basically came and I said this this morning in the video cast on the um, trading view chart. Very clear. So we had a hollow candle reversal in the morning, and uh, and then today was Tuesday, right? Yeah. So we had a hollow candle reversal right here. This is this was the one. You guys, I, I pointed that right there. This was hollow at that you know at that time. Went beautifully up, hit the top of the channel. I didn't draw this line when it hit it. I drew it before it hit it, if you remember, right? Exactly. So it hit the channel, and then it gave in. And we got we got some nice fat selling. It tried to hold the channel again at around uh, three o'clock, and then just gave in. So saying all that, there's different ways to look at it. And this is one thing I'm noticing big time. First of all, you notice how pinched this Bollinger is. Look at that. You mm -hmm. see that? This is a very pinched Bollinger. It is very pinched Bollinger. And it also happens to be that we are at the lower end of the uh, acceleration band, right there. Little slippage down to about 2,000 on this S&P, 1999, whatever you call it. And an engagement with the with a, a beautifully rising 50-day. The 50-day is a very, very, very powerful line, guys. 50 days worth of moving, you know, averages of prices is not something to sneeze with. No wonder that every, you know. Everyone thinks it's the Bible of moving averages, you know. So the bottom line is that 50-day moving average is at 1997. And is that the 50-day or the 50-hour? It's same thing. 50-day. Oh yeah, this is a, this is on a one-hour chart. So let's look at daily. Thank you. Yeah, you can correct. Me. Okay, here. So the 50-day is at 1989. So I'm basically looking at I'm looking at the hourly chart here. So let me stick to that for a minute, uh, and then we'll look at the daily. So one one thing at a time. So on on the on the daily, um, we basically veered a lot away from the all these days. You know when we we're just you know running and and moving back and forth, whatever. The standard deviation, as you can see, from uh, the let me get the uh, the standard deviation was quite high, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, like almost, almost like plus one here, quite high, no question about it. So today was the first day, believe it or not, on a very powerful uptrending 50 and 34 SMA. Let's just put it this way: simple moving averages that we has actually engaged and did the mean reversion. So this is the zone in which the market needs to hold. If it falls apart from this zone in a very big way, and things start to get quite dicey, and I mentioned that on my few times today, on the Periscope, on the early morning um, video, so it's pretty clear. Once we break out uh, outside this line, then things get pretty dicey, no question about it. But as long as it holds here, it can be caught, looked on as a... Um, it can it can be looked on as a uh, consolidation channel or whatever you call it. So let me uh, redraw this. Oh, one sec. There you go. So let's say we draw it like this. Oops, sorry. 
So again, the engagement is still at the 50 on the hourly. The daily is not going to make you money on a daily basis, okay? It's the hourly, one hour and the four hour that will work on or work towards guiding you through um through the day. But you daily know, sets direction, doesn't it? Yeah, it sets direction. But how long is your how long is your your um, vision? Every time the market drops, I mean, I'll be very direct here. Every time the market drops 100 points, you guys are all freaking out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so don't, you know, it's like, it's like saying, you know, it's like the same old story. I'm being realistic because the same thing happens to me. So no bullshit here. You know, we all talk about, oh, it sets the direction. So what? You're not a directional player. You want to make money over the next 24 hours or the next six hours. You, I mean, I can tell you the market's going to be up 2000 points. Let's say, for example, I tell you, and I've said this so many times before at, at the bottom, like, okay, market's going to be up 3000 points from um, uh, uh, or 2,000 points from uh, from down here, okay? You honestly believe that you're going to listen to me and buy something here and wait for 2,000 points? No. Every little flip, you're going to be selling, trying to make money. So, yes, the daily does give you the direction. There's no question about it. And on the daily direction, the market's still telling us it wants to, it wants to go to 2020, 2030, and 2040. So that's all clear. But that's not going to make you money when the volatility waves hit the markets during the day all of a sudden, which it does every time. So I just want to be clear on that because if we don't face, this is something very key, and it took me years to get my head straight on this. If we if we don't cut out the bullshit that we talk about and what we really do, then we'll never be successful traders. Once you accept the fact that we are basically all bullshit, we all want to make money within two hours. <laughs> No, it's true. We all want to, and we are, and, and we don't, and, and, and every time the market dips 200 points, we're like, oh my God, you know, this and that. So it took me a lot of time to, to screw my head in place and, and say, you know what, given the volatility in the market that we're going through right now, Scott, it is important that we look at the shorter time frames to manage our trades. Because honestly speaking, given the volatility that happens uh, uh, even, you know, in uh, overnight, it's almost insane sometimes. It's almost insane. And 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 so that's something which is completely out of our control. Now the good news is, good news is one second, that this is what I feel, okay? That the amount of volatility is not as random and crazy as it was here. So that's something that's something I like. You know, it's something that okay. You know, we're not opening down 30, 40, 50 points, and um, I mean S and P points like you know four, five hundred points, and that seems to have subsided. So let's say, let's move all this stuff, and uh, let's look at this uh, chart in a, in a, in a uh, more realistic fashion. So we um, here we have the here we have the Fed reversal right um, on on the 17th right. So basically what we did was we hit some resistance there. It's really as simple as that. It's really as simple as that. We have resistance where we should hit, which is around 2020. Because that's why I kept on talking about 2020, 2020. We hit resistance at 2020. Generally speaking, once you hit resistance, you give back about, and this is what I've noticed, about 20 to 30 S&P points max, unless there is going to be a fundamental change in direction in the market. Jim, you getting this? Yeah, yeah. Unless there is a fund, unless there is going to be a fundamental change in direction in the market, which I don't believe there is, between now and the end of the year, the general direction in the market is going to be fits and start, fits and start. But the market should get towards what we're going to look at it. Uh, we're, is, is going to get towards that 2100 level. So saying all that, if you look at this particular pattern. This is nothing but a consolidation channel in play at this point, and and that and and uh, right there. So you have a large, you know, you you have a sharp move in between, you know, um, bouncing off the downtrend line, and now you have a consolidation channel. What it gets tricky, and this is where we where we have to um, load up on the puts, uh, is if we if we break. If we break below this, guys, right, and it breaks in a spectacular fashion, in other words, a really ugly red candle, like something like this, you get it? Once we see any of that or halfway there, 
we're not only out of dodge with all our longs, we're going to go reasonably heavy short because that means something bigger is happening that we don't know. So just keep that in mind. So we need to see a candle that breaks the 50 because once you have that type of breath thrust, just the way we get these on the upside, right? These type of things. So once we see that type of candle, you know where we're going. We are going right here to test the downtrend line again around 1945 to 1950. But before that happens, we need to convincingly break the 50. And let's not be heroes once we break the 50. Because between here, guys, and testing this downtrend line, there's really not that many support levels. In fact, there are no support levels other than these, these type of things. So 1970 is a very important number. I want you guys to keep that in mind. 1970. Because it could do this. Look. See? It could do that. So 1970, first major stop. But any break of, if of, uh, uh, any break of, what's this level? 1997 or so, convincing break would basically bring us down to 1976 really, really quick. And that was a major reversal uh, candle at 12 noon last Wednesday. 12 noon last Wednesday, yes. Okay? So so that's, you know, so it's 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 kind of, you know, it's it's kind of readable. It's just that we don't know what waves are coming up from what angle. But I repeat again, and this is important, that unless we see uh, unless we see large break like a red candle break of the 50 on the hourly um, we don't want to get um, we don't want to get into swing any large type of swing puts on, on on that side I'm you know so so that's you know I'm carrying a couple of puts I have the UVXY um, I have my second round of calls which are underwater um, I'm looking for cheaper prices to really load up as long as I, I see the the trend lines, these two trend lines, still uh, still moving up. So if that's the case, uh, then it'll give me enough ammo to to um, to load up. Now. And that's this week that you're buying, or next week? This week. Next week, I don't know. Next week is going to be very tricky. Okay. Uh, I know one thing. If we get a major turbulent thing, let's say tomorrow, uh, we could because tomorrow's Wednesday, right? Okay, there you go. I almost forgot. So tomorrow's Wednesday, and you know Wednesdays are always tricky days. So I know one thing, and I'm going to stick by it, that overall my um, uh, overall of what I've seen repeatedly over the years, monthly options expiration, they take the market down, get people all juiced in. It's a complete bear trap because by Friday, they literally shoot them one after another. Because by that time, everybody, so, so, so that's a little scary. So what I'm saying is um, that, um, that we might hit some rough patch on tomorrow afternoon and Thursday before they run the market up strongly on Friday. It's monthly expiration. And the put call ratio is still, is still very much on the short side. And you know what the machines love doing to go and basically go ahead and, and decimate those clusters of shorts. So they'll do whatever it takes. So take it for whatever it's worth. Monthly options expiration is not something, um, is a bullish event. Is a bullish event. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. So that's what I'm looking at on this chart. Now let me show you the same chart on, um, now, now here's other scenario, which is the really bearish scenario, okay? That let's say this was the short-term top, right there, 2020, right? And we and we get something like this. If we get something like this, then we are basically first first level of engagement is going to be right here at that 1950 level. All right, just remember that, and which coincides with the retest again of the downtrend line which will cause a fantastic, which will create a fantastic buying opportunity. 
1950, 1970, and most importantly, right here on the 50 is the line that we are looking at. So now let's take a look at our dailies to get a broader picture on what's, you know, let me see the four hour. Yeah, the four hour is not even like doing anything. You know, it's just coming down. It's, it's uh, this crossover. Oh, here's something um, just noticed here. One second. Let me get this lines out. Clean out the chart a little bit. Let's say we move all. The, no, let's not move all of them. So if you look at it here from a channel perspective, I'll show you guys something. You guys can see clearly what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Watch this, Jim. This was the Fed thing. Um, this was the channel which we broke out of. Hold on. Okay. Forget these terms. Okay. Still amazes me how accurate those channels can be and how precise. And and you know how it's um um it's not that they're just accurate. You also have to have the knack to draw the lines to fit that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. showing the naked chart without all these lines that we are creating to give us a roadmap is uh, is really what what makes these real money makers. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh, so that's that's the key thing. And once you start drawing them as a pattern, then you start to see the pattern, and then you start to see all the different you know all the different um, scenarios that can play out. So okay, so let me show you scenario number one. This is definitively still a large dragon bullish pattern. We're clear on that, right? Yeah. Okay. Short term, what we saw today. Short term, we had a nice hammer reversal, a beautiful one, okay? No question about it. Made some decent money off it early in the day, and then then this was a bearish engulfing. Not good. So what's a low, what's, what's the, uh, and it's not that bad either, but what's, what's, so what's the support on that? The support is the breakout level. This line here, this line here is where it broke out from, right there. You guys see? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that brings us down to 1997. So that's roughly about six more S&P points from where we closed that. We closed at 2003, and uh, let's call it 2004. We need to go down to 1997. That should act as that should act as uh, as a as a support level within a, a trading range of roughly um, three and 23. Roughly. Three and 21, uh, roughly 24 S&P points, and 24. That trading band is 24 S&P points. So 24 S&P points, guys, uh, is roughly about 180 to 190 Dow points. Okay. Now, what gets really tricky on the daily is purely from a symmetrical standpoint. If we break below here. This line here, there. Okay, we break below 1988, things start to get dicey. So, yeah. where, so where does the next move come? The next, the next, the next move from uh, would be if we break this, would be engaging the 50 and the 34, which are, by the way, on the on the four hour, starting to curl up. They are starting to inch up. So this would be the next move. At that point, we fall rather quickly down towards a 1960 level. Now, notice one thing here. Let me show you. There is another breakout level here. See that? Mm -hmm. It coincides with that thing here. I've noticed over the years that cup breakouts, 
not channel breakouts, cup breakouts and, and uh, these type of dragon bullish formation, you know, wherever the breakout points were, they generally get tested. So if that's the case, then this one is one breakout level. The next one is right here. Can you see that, Scott? Yes. Right, that right there. And kind of coordinates with the daily being way overbought. Yes. And yeah, there's a lot of confluence right at that point. And there's a lot uh -huh. of confluence at that point. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. So let's take a look at the internals. You're absolutely right. And uh, because the standard deviation of this, you know, is, uh, is, is quite high on the daily. Correct. So saying all that, we're also noticing the line starting to turn. Now, in a strong market, okay, in a strong market, um, you don't necessarily need to get down here. Because getting down here would mean probably that we need to basically come and retest these. You know what I'm saying? That would do this reset. But it is possible because remember, when we created this double bottom, it was a large fall. So are we going to do this again? No. Actually, in order for this to reset all the way like this on the daily, you would actually come and have to, have to test 1860 again. I, I haven't written that off, by the way, just so you know that, because that would create a really, really solid floor if it doesn't break. Then you would have that, uh, uh, then you would have a triple bottom, right? Yeah. That would be really strong. But triple bottoms get tricky because by that time, you know, every time you hit something, like I said, it gets weaker. So I don't know. I haven't written this move down yet. I have a feeling that they won't do this move down in October because almost half of October is gone, right? Yeah, that'd be a big move. I think it comes, and I think you guys will agree with me on that because you understand this stuff, is it's going to come during the first week in November when things really hit the fan with the debt ceiling and the speakership and all that stuff. I think that's going to be the time. The first, after the first couple of days in November, shit really hits the fan and creates this tradable bottom, which we are going to buy hands down. So that's what that's my that's my take. I think this happens in November. Happens in November. If it happens in October, it's going to scare the living daylights out of every single soul. And then again, we're going to bounce. Because my feeling is regarding China, one of the comments that I made, I said the worst is over. I don't mean the worst is over. We don't know. I mean, they got so much stuff going on there. I mean, which are, which are you know, they're uh, under the table. The worst is over in the sense of announcing to the world the crappy numbers. You get it? Because yesterday's number, the exports were actually on was better than the consensus. The imports were down quite a bit. But look at the Shanghai market. It was actually up. And if you look at the Chinese ADRs and stuff on this side, they weren't really down that much. It wasn't like a free fall. So I think they're massaging their numbers reasonably well. And one of the top guys, like I said in the video, cast, he didn't show his face, but they mentioned him. And he's really good. He called a whole pullback in the China market. He's basically saying, which really parked my ears, that is a 25% rally on the Shanghai index. 25% rally on the Shanghai index between now and year end. I mean, that's like a face-ripping rally. And then a hard, sharp pullback to the first part of the year. I think that's, that's very plausible. So I think that's quite plausible. And looking at the Shanghai index, I have to get my indices in gear. I do have one here, which is the Dow Jones Shanghai index, okay? And I'm going to pull this down here. One second. It's on, on Think or Swim. Because I'm going to start concentrating on looking at the. So this is the four hour. Let's look at it. Wow. Okay. So this is the Shanghai index, by the way. This is the Dow Jones Shanghai index, but anyway, it's tracking the Shanghai. You get it? The Chinese market. So mm -hmm. if you look at this chart, you guys are smooth enough to tell me you're going to buy this. You're going to buy this. A retest of, of the 50 and the 34, a nice hockey stick bottom. You know, that's what it is. You know, I mean, these, I love these patterns. Look at that. I don't like, I love these patterns because I think it's going to go all the way up here. 
It's just that it's so much opportunity, you know, this can go to 480. So let's do a quick math here. He says we're going to go up for, um, the, from the lows, let's say from 400, we're going to go up 100 points. He's saying 25%, right? Mm -hmm. Matches? There you go. Yeah, he's, going, he's saying we're going to go here. And then we're going to pull back again. I'll buy that. Because this is a weekly chart. I'll buy that. And um, so, I mean, so that's what I'm getting at. Is, um, so, sorry. So, does this, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then tries to create a handle, fails, makes another low. That creates a double bottom. That creates a double bottom at the 400 level. Maybe a little slippage. And then, you know, probably a sizable buying opportunity. So he's right, you know, now that I see it for the first time, it actually makes sense. You know, 500 is right here. An overshoot would be right up around there, and this was the big fallout when everything, you know, uh, 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 this was the August crash, right, here and there. So um, that makes sense. I'll take that. Now, let's take a look at uh, futures or what is it, down about a buck and a quarter. What are the Chinese? Oh, they always come out like 9, 10 o'clock. So, so that's what we're looking at. So we're clear on that, right? That we have we have danger down to 1988, and hopefully we bounce from there because if we break that, then we're going to come straight down to 1960. So you're talking increments of roughly 100 to 200 points. All right. Internally speaking, we saw that this is starting to peter down a little bit. The, the histograms and this is starting to pull back a little bit and this is all on the longest I mean on the longer time frame side uh, ie the four hour and the one hour so that's why I'm sticking to the one hour and stuff because those are you know those are tradable they're tradable but but the but the levels are pretty clear here right so let's take a look at the Dow Jones just to look at it you know, I like looking at the Dow Jones nowadays, just a simple version. So here's the Dow Jones uh, daily, Scott, okay? And uh, when you see a gap open like that, like the open mouth. Still climbing? Yes. That's a powerful signal. That means that rally is going to last another couple of days or more. It can change rapidly. It could be down 150 points at the open. This can turn, but just just show you know just uh, telling you about things I've I've seen over the years. Um, one second, move it to the other screen. Uh, over the years, and when you have this, this is what generally happens. This back a little bit. It keeps on continuing for a couple of days. It kind of fits in with my thesis that we're going to have a good strong finish to the week. Looking at this here on the daily. We are at the bottom of, this is a bull flag, okay? So this is a bull flag. It's still a bull flag. Unless we break below the five-day moving average and move down below the 50. You get it? On the Dow. So still a bull flag. We're at the bottom of the channel. We had a bunch of very powerful days. And the five-day is engaged at around 17,000 right there, the yellow line. Important for you guys to keep an eye on the five-day moving average. It's a short-term directional indicator, obviously. And that five-day is right now at six, at 16,980, okay? So you're talking roughly another 100 points. Get it? Another 100 points. So, so keep that in mind. So as long as the five-day angle of ascent is still up, you and I showed this earlier on in the video cast, you're starting to see the 34 turn. See that? Yeah, that's a nice turn. Yeah. These are not instantaneous. Like Scott mentioned earlier, you know, this is more of a swing thing, but it's good to keep an eye on it, even though we, you know, we, we were trading for... Uh, um, we're keeping a close eye on our trades, obviously. 
but uh, but this is good sign. And by the time it crosses over here, just so you know, the market's going to be up more than 400 points. So the crossover, by the way, just remember, does, it doesn't happen at the exact moment that the market goes. It's a slow moving turn. It's 30, 34 days of moving, uh, you know, of, of prices being um, being averaged. So the 50 turning takes time. 34. By the time it turns like this and crosses, the market's going to be up here. Just so you guys know that, okay? So, because remember, we just rallied um, 1,200 points, right? Not 1,200. Um, yeah, we just rallied 1,200 points. 1,200 right. points, right? From 50, from here? Yep. Correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, like, like from the last inflection point, not looking here. So from here, it was 15,750. We're at 17,000. So that's um, 1,250. Am I doing this right? Yeah, 1,250. Yeah. Points. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we rallied 1,250 points, yet the lines didn't even budge. This just starting to turn. See? So this is something that took me years to keep. You know, it's such such a simple observation, but we just don't give it that much priority. That you have a humongous rally. So if you're just tracking these things by looking to see whether or not they're turning, you'd have missed out the whole rally. That's what I'm getting at. So by the time this turns, hallelujah, you know, we're going to be up here, probably around 17,300, 17,400. And by the time it actually has a crossover, we'll be like, why the heck didn't we, you know, get a third mortgage on the house and buy the market, you know? So, so it's really every time it's the same old story. Unless, Scott, unless, and I'll be the first one to admit, there is something so fundamentally wrong that we don't know. You get it? Like a slew of a slew of crappy guidance and numbers, and these guys are saying that's it. We can't take it anymore. Um, so I'm talking about the companies reporting, and um, so that's that's a different story. That's a fundamental change in the global economy. So we know there's a slowdown. We have gone through it, all that stuff. But a fundamental deceleration that can be changed, that's a different story. That's the, that's the onset of a bear market. So that's all. So that's it. So on the Dow Jones, we're clear on what the levels are, right? Yep. This, this list level is, uh, the breakout level is 16,961. Actually, a little lower than that, right there. 16,946. We could very well come and test that. We just don't want to break below the 50 at 16,700 because then things get, I don't really care. I mean, if we're short, we're loving it. So I would say that if we break um, uh, if we break this line here and you start to see the five days starting to turn down, we stay short biased. We stay short biased. You know, we, we sell rallies because then there's a, then there's a, there's a real, then it's going to be like this. So you're seeing a nice, uh, one second, dragon bullish, all of a sudden the dragon just started to do the Michael Jackson moon dance backwards, you know? So, so there would be sort of the move down. And if we break, you know, so this is a key level, 16,300. Because at that point, you're back underneath that powerful downtrend line. We'll see you later. We're gonna come. We're gonna fall here so quickly, and then after we fall here, I wouldn't be surprised if we do this. Mm -hmm. That I repeat, will most probably happen in November. And uh, so that's that's my take um, on 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 the overall take. Um, let me show you something. One second. If we look at this here. It's giving giving us a pretty clean view of what's going on short term. So we have an extremely pinched Bollinger, right? You see that green line? You see that, Jim? Yeah, I got it. You got it, right? Okay, I had a tough time seeing it. Like, what is that green line? It's right there. Yes. You saw four mechanical cells that started at, uh, which started at, uh, what did it say, 434? I don't understand. I think I'm on a different time zone on this thing because this stupid thing is telling me 4.30. See that? 16.30? 
It actually started at 1.30. I must be on a Pacific time zone. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Look, look at the time down here. The selling started around, it's saying it started at 3.30. It didn't start at 3.30. Yeah, it started, I might have started at 1,500. I'm trying to see on my other screen. Hold on. It started at 11. So I am on the Pacific time on this stupid thing here. I got to change that. This, this, see that spinning top right there? Yeah. So that was the, that was the time. So it started at 11.30. So anyway, um, because I just looked at my other screen, that's exactly what it's showing. So this one is uh, pretty clear. I sh talked about it this morning. So if somebody was paper trading and uh, not risking real money in the market, they'd be like, wow, that was great. So uh, we are right at the bottom of the channel right now, which also happens to which also happens to coincide with, one second, which also happens to coincide with um, the, let me move that so you guys can see it, lo behold, on the one hour, the 50, upward rising 50 moving average, see that? Yep. Yep. This line I drew because this one was a, uh, this one was the last reversal top right there. The 199.74. So maybe the market just wanted to test the uptrending 50 and um, and test the uh, test the, the the reversal breakout right there. See that? There. Okay. Scott, can you see it? Yeah. So that's your mean reversion again. Always, always. Yep. Scott, you there? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, no. I also did a, a a fib on that move, and it was a fifty percent retracement. You're a smart man. That's cool. That was a fifty percent retracement, huh? From where? From from here? I did it. I did it on the ES. Um, yeah, it would be from like the October seventh. You know where it hit kind of the low range there. So a more recent. Oh, oh from here, the recent low. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Or, no, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, it was like a perfect hit. No kidding, right? And it's amazing, like you said, how all these things, like Jim said, it's amazing how these old things fall into place, right? When you start to analyze them, it really does fall into place. I love it. So now, loving or no loving, we just want these lines to, we just want to be on the right side of the track. That's basically what we want. We just want to be bulldozed in <laughs> because that's really our goal. We don't want to be bulldozed in. So at least we're painting out the scenario so I'm prepared and you guys are prepared. I know. So... Saying this, there's the 50, then you have the 50, then you have the 50 fib pullback, and uh, then you got this powerful breakout that we saw on uh, on uh, the 8th, right? So a uh, powerful breakout that we saw on the 8th. So we're good. So we're good with that. Now, this is what another thing I'm liking. I'm liking this. Okay? The one hour took a whole day to reset today, if you think about it. Because even when we are making these highs and we're like, oh, yeah, look at that, you know, kaboom and all that stuff. And, you know, taking some profits off the table, things like that. And, all, you know, the fact is the one hour never validated that move. Do you guys understand what I said? So a yeah, lot it was starting stuff, to move down. Right. So basically it was stuck here actually at that time. It was just kind of in limbo. So that was a negative divergence. So if I was really, really focused on it, but I was too like, you know, I was a little giddy with my Tesla call and all that stuff. But if I was really thinking with that, but I still went in, it was a little bit late, but I still did really well on those, on those, you know, I didn't expect those puts to move like that. I bought them at five and change. They went to 11 and a half. I got out of most of them at around, believe it or not, at around eight. So I have a bunch of them and I left it out there. And beautiful, they're 11 and a half. So... So the, this this itself, um, because I bought both the 2005s and the 2010. So the numbers they gave you were for the 2005 S&Ps. So I was a little bit more aggressive with my short in the sense that I expected the pullback to be a little bit fast and furious. You get it? 
Mm-hmm. So that's why I bought 10 points out of the money, even though I put out for a level of safety the 2010s out there for people so that they didn't get completely bull, you know, uh, gored by the bull if the market turned around and went the other way. You get it? Mm-hmm. So, and plus I like, you know, I said five bucks. I mean, come on, you know, let me start nibbling away at a bunch of them. So, so that was good. Uh, now, this is good. The thing we have to keep in mind, and we have, we've gone through that water torture before, that this doesn't mean it's just going to go like this. It could very well do something like this before it really takes off. So that's what we have to watch. Is are these stochastics going to turn, or will they just muddle around the bottom for a good solid, let's say, four or five hours, or maybe for the whole day? We don't know that. And then... We have to have some position in there because it is 100% certainty, that's a given, that it's going to reset higher. Question is when. I know when it's going to do it by Friday. I know that. Question is, will it be Friday? Will it be Thursday? We don't know. So, But it's going to do it, just so you know that. If this will be done by Friday morning or Friday afternoon. Because if it stays like this all the way down here till Friday, that means something's really rotting, really rotting. So we don't, you know, we, I, I don't know. I mean, then somebody's just like very depressed with everything. So um, so that's something to to keep in mind. Uh, but given what we're seeing here, that's the case. Now let's take a, a picture of the daily or the four hour. Go Can I throw a question at you for a second? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, during, during the day, we're, we're throwing around um, SPX splits and SPX calls. Yeah. And, you know, long and short. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm good with, like, long on Tesla and short on, you know, and, and it put, puts on SPX. Yeah. But I know sometimes you have SPX puts and SPX calls on running at the same time. Yeah. And that seems a little weird to me. I, I can't wrap. I'm having a hard time putting my head around it. Yeah. So, so the way you manage it is this. It's a mental thing, right? The way you yep. manage it is saying, look, my four-day buyers going into the end of the week is a positive one. So the way you, uh, this is how I do it. So what I do mentally is I basically say, look, these are all tactical trades. So there are two ways you can do it. One, you look at your aggregate profit on that pair trade because it's really a straddle, right? You're going long and short at the same time. You're playing an arbitrage game. So you look to see on your P&L what your net number is in between the two uh, two two strikes on the on the calls and the puts. All right. So so that's number one. But the other way I look at it is I'm playing a tactical short here, given that we're seeing a tactical pullback. So I try to mentally look at that as a fact that that's a completely separate trade than the other one. Now, you can completely go out of one and just stay in one, and uh, but the only problem is that given the volatility in the markets, you could very well miss a very sharp move up uh, yeah. if you're completely out of one particular series, I mean, uh, of one particular uh, uh, trade, you know what I'm saying? And it's happened to me before. So it might seem easy on hindsight, but let's say you had no longs and the market opens up 20 S&P points tomorrow. It's happened before, so how do you feel? You know, so that's what I'm saying. So the, I think the best way, the best way you do it is you you train your head to look at them as two separate trades, as two separate trades, and not as an aggregate trade that one's going up, but it's kind of taking away money from the other one. So in a way, you're kind of taking from Peter and beating Paul or whatever you call it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, one goes up and the other one goes down at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So the way I look at it is the one which is going higher. I'm going green on that, like I did with my puts. Okay, I still have a few left. And uh, so the way I train my mind, and I've done this always, is to say, okay, I'm going to skim the profits of this fat one, and I'm going to basically, I'm just waiting for a good entry points on my long. So I'm going to use that to cost average into the other one. Uh, that's one way to look at it. But I'll, I'll admit, in a volatile type of market like we, we were dealing with every day, there's no easy answer. You know what I'm saying? So there is there is no easy answer. One thing you might want to do if you want to keep your head clean is just get out of one side and say, listen, I'm going to do this to the short side right now because this is what's, what I'm seeing because you got to go with your gut and uh, and just uh, not have the pair trade going. 
So that's one way to do it. Or you could go, like, say, off the SPY or the SPX. You know that we're on the top of the range of the mm -hmm. stock. And so put a, a November monthly in there the put. And then just trade the hourly for quicker trades and just leave that monthly in till we tank. Because you know what's going to happen. You know it's going to reset down on the monthly. That's or, right. Or on the daily. Yeah, that's the whole thing. And you're with yeah. the fantastic answer, Scott. And, you know, you can do that's that. That's my plan, at least. That's that's what I'm starting to do. I'm starting to build puts now. Yep. Anticipating November, end of end of October, November, because oh, we're so you, high. You just, just, like, just like a stock, you're paying cheaper and cheaper prices on it. Yeah. Knowing yeah. very well that you're going to get a big fat. So, so that's what I'm saying. That that's that's looking at it both the short and the slight intermediate term, and um, you know what I'm saying you're not just looking at the short term. You're saying okay, intermediate term going into November, this is what I'm expecting. So let me just accumulate these babies at cheaper prices, you know. So, so Jim, but Jim, if you just want to play like you know just linear, like binaries, then just stick mm -hmm. to one side or another, um, right. or at least that's, you know, that's what I did, yeah. Yeah, and so so these um, so the ones I sold. I mean, I bought into the weakness this morning. Then I these are the 2000. Uh, which ones are they? Yeah, the two, two, two the 2020s. So the 2020s had a trading range today of three and ten. So I managed to get out of a bunch of them at around 980. All right, 980, 975. So on the on 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 the on the 20s because you know, then I saw the market hit the top of this tier right here. And then when I saw this reversal, <coughs> I'm thinking it's just a minor reversal. I didn't think we were going to be doing this, you know what I'm saying? But then as I saw the second candle develop, that's when I went ahead and uh, I started to buy the puts here, to be honest with you, because I started to see the five-day curl down. But when I saw the second candle, I said, let me go out there and tell everybody it's time to buy the, buy the UVXY and stuff. And it worked out for a bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? The U UVXY from the point of entry was up almost five points. So, so that's what I'm getting at. Is um, markets a tough read? I mean, just because you get a reversal candle off the off the uh, upper Bollinger, uh, it really doesn't mean anything. Because when I bought the puts, I saw I was actually down within the first couple of minutes because the market spiked up a little bit. So that's what I'm getting at. You know. So <laughs> you need to just um, you need to basically. Either stay, if you just want to keep a clear head, just uh, stick to the stick to one side. Given the fact that you already have long or longs on the Teslas and stuff, it really doesn't matter if you have a long on the SPX at that point because you already have a long hedge, right? Yep. Exactly. So in that case, just stick to the SPX um, puts. You have the long hedges out there in the form of Tesla and stuff, which moves like a monster. It actually stayed up pretty nice given the market, and um, and um, and so you go from there. So that's the you know the, try doing that. Okay. Yeah, so so this is looking good, and uh, if this is going to be, don't forget one thing here. This was the bottom of the market. I mean, this was uh, 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 sorry, late September. I mean, this was the last short-term bottom in the market, right? Pretty ugly, and at that point, we were down to um, this was the case. So. We're getting pretty oversold. I mean, we're below 20 right now on the RSI. So once you get towards 10 on the RSI, it's like a screaming buy. So we can get there by tomorrow morning for all I know. So that's all I'm, all I'm saying. You know, if you're following the, uh, following the RSI, you know, uh, buy over, I mean, sell over 80 and buy under 20, well, it's exactly shaping out to be that. So that's one. So let's take a look at the VIX to see what the hell's going on there. Because believe it or not, today, I didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, so we shall look at uh, the VIX. All right. So here is something I'm going to show you guys. All right. This is like telling me, like screaming out in my clueless brain. The VIX, the mark, the VIX basically is coming off a pretty substantial bottom. No question about it. But let's, let's talk about the short term. Look, this is, a, this is an hourly chart. I'm going by the 60 minute. On the hourly, the VIX is almost overbought on a small move of about two points. So what's that telling you? It's telling you it's running out of juice. Remember, the stochastics are the juice, right? The gasoline. 
So as it's as it's going up here, once it gets up here, you know what happens? It's gonna do this, and the VIX always does this. The VIX doesn't. Our, the VIX doesn't. Our stochastics. Like, our stochastics a measure of liquidity, kind of. Stochastics basically measures the level of uh, buying and selling pressure. You know, the stochastics. Okay. The stochastics. Uh, yeah. So that 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 includes part of liquidity. I mean, what is the exact definition of of uh, uh, one second. <clears throat> I'll look it up. One second. It basically measures like the MACDs and all that stuff. Um, it measures the. But let me let's get a actual definition from Investopedia. All right, stochastic <laughs> oscillator. All right, let's do this together. So George Lane. Develops the cat indicated the major relationship between issues closing price and the price range over a predetermined period of time. 14 is the mathematical number used in the model. It can, depending on technicians, goal be some other. Okay. The, pre, the premise of a stochastic holds that a stock's closing price tends to trade at the high end of the day's price action. Price action is. Okay. There. This is the keyword. An example of such a the stochastic oscillator, okay, is that pre relative strength in this in a range of 0 to 100, okay, at either 20 to 80 range or the, we, we follow the 20 to 80 range, okay. So at the bottom line is that um, there. So, so stochastic is really RSI. Yes, well, the RSI here. The K is the fastest line, and the D is the slower of the two lines, okay? So percentage D down here, for example. So the investor needs to consider selling the stock when the indicator moves above the 80 level. Conversely, the investor needs to consider buying an issue that is below the 20 line and starting to move up with increased volume. Uh, over the years, many have written articles exploring the tweaking of this indicator, but new investors should concentrate on the basics of stochastic. I just study the basics of the stochastics. So... So that's really what it is. It is a function of the price and the relative strength of the stock based on what we see. And it's a very, very accurate indicator. And in certain particular instruments, it's extremely accurate. So that's what I'm getting at. So, so But then the, the ways you read it is something that comes over time. So the way I'm reading is this. You have an engagement with a 50-day moving average at around 18, right here. See that? A break over the 50-day 50, 50 moving average would be a break below the 50-day moving average on the things that we just looked at. Mm -hmm. That's, you know what I'm saying? So that's what that what we looked at, you know, would be on the hourly, for example, the break of the 50 would start to cause some damage below 1988. Remember on the S&P? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're close on both. Correct. That's what I'm saying. So if the VIX breaks out over 20, boom, you stay short. That's really as easy to see. But at this point, these are very powerful resistances. So my, my feeling is short term, the VIX hits about 18 to 19 and then backs off, creates a double bottom, and that is when, when things start to... So it does this. And once it creates a double bottom, guys, we have to be careful. At that point, we can, we can um, um, load up on the UVXY and the SPX puts and stuff like that. Once it creates a double bottom, okay? This is a single bottom. We're not at, uh, let me see here. 16. 16. So at this point, we need to cross over 18, let's say 18 to 19. And then the next logical point is right here, right there, which is 2035. So that's a pattern symmetry right there. All right, so 20 on the VIX is doable, but this is where we are on the VIX. Now, the, what I'm seeing on the underlying pressure is it's already starting to get overbought on a minor move. And once it gets overbought, that means it's up here, possibly between 19 and 20. So let's, we have to keep an eye on this. Now, this is the hourly. On the daily, the VIX hasn't even, it does have a nice reversal candle. See that little one? See that little one? Mm -hmm. Yep. But it doesn't extend below. So it's not as significant, right? I mean, this is, 
this, if you look at it, it's the beginnings of a move up, a beginnings of a move up, but not a convincing one. This one is telling us that we are going to have a real corrective movement either by the third week in October or November because the VIX on the daily stochastics is at six. That's low. Yeah, wow. So we have to be careful. Exactly. That's low, guys. That's low. Now, saying all that, they can suppress the VIX, keep, keep it down, and there are many, many times where the VIX and the market have gone up together because they're buying protections against a long position. That's what they're doing, right? Now, keep in mind, it's no longer a... a, a that's, that's not me, I don't think. No, that's, that's a stupid ad. That's not me either. <laughs> I know. That was an ad. Oh, for, an ad. ad for, okay. Yeah, Google, like, shoving us with ads. So, anyway, um, so the thing is... Um, Engagement of, with the 50 is at 21, say 70. We do have the 34 crawling down. My point is that anytime the VIX goes below, um, uh, below uh, uh, 20, it generally has a quick bounce. Now, this zone has been taken out of the picture for now, right? This zone. Mm -hmm. Remember, we were trading in this zone for a while, 10, 10 to 15. So... If it enters this zone, that means you're going to see a blast up in the market to its at 17,500 range. That's the way you read the VIX. All right? So if this zone, uh, because this zone is empty. Nobody's in there right now. So if it falls in here, you're going to see the market go boom. You know, 17,500. Who knows? 18,000. So that's also a possibility. It can happen. But at this point, 16 is pretty much the short-term lows on the VIX. So, so we gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta keep keep an eye on that too. Now, let's take a look at the 533. We're ready for whatever comes. But whichever the case, just let's stick to like tight trades on few things and not stick our neck out too much in different areas because otherwise we're gonna get in real trouble. Um, this has been keeping me really light. Yeah, I know. Me too. I mean, me too. I mean, I'm not <laughs> that crazy, but they're working out great because the volatility on the SPXs are so nice that even if you yeah. buy a couple, you know, you know, even if you buy, let's say, two or three when you're very unsure, or one, hey, that's a couple hundred bucks for not doing much if the market falls 100 points or goes up 100 points, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't expect, honestly, I bought them at 560 and they went to 1130. I mean, I'm like, wish I had the whole thing. It didn't matter. You know, I took out a bunch um, at around uh, 8 plus, and then I see it ramp up another three points or two points, and then it goes up not another, you know. So that's just the way, you know, just the way it goes. So looking at this here on the S&P, this is something interesting, guys. Just keep in mind. Within one single day and a little corrective, um, call it a flag or whatever you want to call it, I mean corrective action, we almost went in below 30 on the, this is also RSI, Jim. Okay. Yeah. So this is the 3070 RSI, not the 2080. You get it? Yep. Exactly. So looking at this, um, you would say that uh, looking at this, uh, you could you could make a case that uh, we have more downside where it comes below. Uh, it doesn't always have to be uh, an extended downside. It can be something like this too. Get it? It can be something like this. But a slippage below, um, slippage below, um, and heading towards let's say 10 or 20 again makes it, you know, at this point things were overbought. No question about it. I talked about it. We were out of the Bollinger's, all kinds of stuff. So this corrective action was going to come overall in the market, regardless of individual stocks which are doing their own stuff. So that's the key. So th what I like to see, just want to make it clear that in 24 hours, we basically have corrected what normally would have taken days. So that's a, that, that to me is a big plus. So a little bit more further down, screaming buying opportunity again. What I do have to watch for, and this is my job to alert you guys, is whether or not we're going into an extended period of a bunch of days of a pullback, or is it going to be one of these? That is a harder read but I think I'll be able to tell by looking at the histograms. 
The histograms are very powerful. If you have an extended drop in the market, then these histograms keep on shrinking, shrinking, shrinking till they go negative like this. Get it? Mm. Right. And if they go negative, uh, or if they don't even, I mean, these are very powerful histograms, by the way. That That's telling us the buying pressure was immense, was intense. There was a lot of money that came into the market during this period on the second on the second uh, uh, bottom or uh, at the end of September okay just want you to understand how you read this thing here so with the histogram stink just exploding higher it told you that a significant amount of money came into the market and, and when a significant amount of money comes into the market they don't immediately run away that's all I'm saying so that's 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 the bottom line um, so that's one way to read it and then if you look at um, well, let's look at the weekly. Very interesting. Now, here's a this is the way you read it, okay? A bull will read it like, wow, look at these histograms. Man, we're going to have a couple of weeks of face-ripping rally. They might be right. Look at what's going on here, guys. If you just do your standard trend line, whatever, this histogram on the weekly wants to go positive, correct? There, there you go. Look at look at this is a weekly chart. Despite now the week hasn't ended, I know that. If this is if if, if the week ends, let's say at nineteen ninety, or let's say it ends here, and this is pushed down all the way down here. It's all red, okay? It still doesn't it's still positive. It's still an inside week. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What is deadly is that whole bullish engulfing from last, from the first week in October, is given back, and this bullish and bearish engulfing bar on the weekly looks like this. This is supposed to be red. That's why I'm doing this. Okay. If you see something like this, guys, we're going into a massive fall into November and December. <coughs> That's my opinion because by that yeah. time, this histogram. Yeah. Let me finish. By that time, if this happens, let's say this happens this week. If this happens this week, guys, then we are literally going to, you'll never, see, you know, I will be so bearish. You guys will be like, well, you know, you, I know you two will follow me. I mean, we will make, you know, others will be like, what's going on? You know, no, things are holding up. Bullshit. If I, if you see this swing 533 three, having, having a bearish engulfing, okay, even slightly below this. Doesn't even have to go that far. At that time, we are at 1950. Remember, we looked at 1950. Yeah. Exactly. We break below 1950, all hell breaks loose. We're gonna go and test this low. Because not not only will it not go positive, it's basically gonna go like this. So it'll be a fantastic short opportunity. So that's a, that's another way of looking at things. Um. So right now. If you do that big red bar like that on the weekly, it looks exactly like 2011. It's the I'm same game plan. What? I'm sorry. What was it? What was the thing? Oh, uh, if, 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 if I think in, in, a, in a couple of weeks ago I pointed out there was like a pattern symmetry I saw with okay. um with um August through October in 2011, the last big pullback. Yes. And um, that big red bar would look if you, if you did that, it would look exactly like that that previous um, scenario. And if that's their, that may be their playbook. In other words, uh, like a like a pullback and then a bounce up. Yeah, like a giant pullback, like what you're saying. Yeah, that, that big okay. red bar so following. So, so let's take a, so let's, let's take a look at it. I went back to 2011 here. So and you, I'm going to prove that you're right. Hold on. Okay, so let's look for. So this is this is the low in 2011 in October, okay? Right there. Yeah, but that's the second. That's a, there's a third undercutting low that you're heading towards on that one there. But this is the low though. Yeah, you see you see the one before that with the high with yeah. The, it's hard to see on this one. I, oh, I, oh, I did it on. Uh, you mean right here, August? Yeah, now August, and then go over to the right. Yeah. A couple of bars, and uh, no, not that far. Oh, right here? No. Not, uh, 
No, you were close to it in October. You can kind of see it in there. You're close to it, but you got to look at look at that pattern right there. Oh, uh, um, I, I I see what you're saying. Let me get the let me get the yeah. in here. What you're talking the, about is yeah. convoluted. Um, right. It, it comes down again. Now. What you're talking about is this pattern here, similar to this. It's re is repeating there. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're basically saying that we can have a run, can happen. You could have a run, and I'll validate your point by another thing. Look at the internals. Yeah. This is very similar to this. Oh, look. wow, yeah. Exactly I never saw that. Man, that, 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 guys, that look that, at this on the, um, what's that other, uh, the, um, wow. That's big. Trading, check that on TradingView. It's easier to say. On TradingView? TradingView, it's much easier to say, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go there in a second. So, yeah. Wow, that that's 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 not just wild. That's like we we just we're just spotting things here that the, these billion dollar players are not even like probably figuring it out. I'm that serious. I know that's that, crazy that, similar. Yeah. Let me just that, say that, thing that. is really positive. Not only is this positive, because this is exactly the same. This is telling you we are going to go positive at least for for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. But after after one more dip, I think you're, you're if you look at this playbook, there's one more dip that's going to undercut the. Uh, you know, the uh, August 24th, wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's possible. That's possible. Yeah. Or at least touch the August 24th lows. Yeah. So now, look, let me tell you what else is positive. Look at these stochastic lines, guys. Yeah. They're headed straight up. So heading straight up means they want to go at least to up here before they make a turn. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That is something very important to keep in mind. Because these lines are the real money makers. So this double bottom that we saw, the lines where I, I even I even showed it to you guys, the line that the stochastics were moving higher. So this is so what this is telling you that we have a fair shot of even testing the 2130 lows. I mean sorry, highs. Because when you when you look at this, let me make this a little bit closer so we can see it. When you look at this here. There is nothing that's telling me that this is going to turn around. I mean, this is this is almost furiously fast and furious wants to go at least at least a little green. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. So and this is really starting to move because this is this is doing this. And 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 it needs to go. I mean, now the lines have actually gone up here. So th th that means it wants to go up here. See? So it, it come, because look at look at the stochastic lines. There, this is the red one. This is the black one. So this is a weekly little pullback, and of course the weekly is completely negated below 1950. So that's the key thing. 1950. So remember that 1950. So um, in between it can come down to 19. You know it can come down here. To what we saw 1980, 1990 doesn't matter. Um, so if it does that, then you're looking at this. Very interesting. You know, so this is that was, a, that was great. That was serious that, stuff, though. I mean, yeah. I'm glad that we all looked at it. You know, I mean, I normally don't look at the weeklies, you know, uh, but I do look at it just to get an idea, and it sa saved me um, a great deal. Now let's look at the Nasdaq, for example. Pretty damn good. Needs more work, no question about it, right? But there's more room, mm -hmm. the more room to go. Um, Histograms need to really, you know, start to shrink a little bit faster. Let's take a look at the uh, Russell. Oh, by the way, uh, Tom said hi to you guys. He, he, he for some reason didn't have power. Uh, yeah, so he's uh, he's like a bummer, you know. He texted me earlier. So this is looking really good, the Russell, and I showed that on my charts too, because if you look at this Russell here. This is a this is really a nice pattern. We're at least going like I showed this morning to 1,200. This is nice. Somewhat similar to this. So, so do you know much on an Elliott wave? I don't know much about Elliott wave. I I understand the basics of it, uh, but I'm not a expert in Elliott wave. That's why I always post that guy. He's really really good, Tony Caldero. Yeah, I've been trying to to learn the the five waves, and the, you know, and I, I, know. I know the three is the the majority of the wave, but 
Correct. Correct. And the five is supposedly equal to the first, right? One equals yeah. five or something? Uh, yeah. Unless it's truncated. Unless it's truncated. <laughs> and, in, and nowadays it's truncated like a lot, both on the up and down. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, because the algos got hold of all the Elliott Wave guys and said, we're going to screw you guys every day. So, uh, yeah. because that's really what these, I'm sure these machines, when these guys write these algos, they're definitively, it's a human writing the algos, obviously. And then they're self, self, then they're self machine learning, right? Then they learn themselves what to do. So, like Watson. So the point is that when they're first writing it, I bet you they look at the standard patterns and say, that's it. We're going to hit them here. We're going to hit them there. We're going to completely mess with them. Because algos don't need technicals. They just do what they need to do. So uh, that, that's my thesis. You know, that's what I keep on plugging away. That these algos purposely want to mess around and, and do what they need to do. Because they know very well what these traditional guys look at, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could spend it with three hours in YouTube and know what every single big shot technical analyst is looking at. So you write a program which does the opposite, you know? To, it is it, interesting stuff, though. I, 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 it's fascinating. It, yeah, yeah. The guy, the guy who started HFT is an Indian guy. Um, I have his book on Audible. I still have to listen to it. Um, it is called, um, I'll give you the name. Uh, he, he's been on CNBC a couple of times. He's a freaking genius, that guy. Um, and he's not like, a, he, he's actually working with the SEC. Uh, he's not like one of the bad guys. He wants to make sure that algos function in an environment where they are not being completely deceitful and doing illegal stuff like massive spoofing and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. fake, fake trades and stuff. That's why, you know, that's the real bad thing. That's the flip side, the dark side of algos because they can do so many things so quickly, um, massive million share orders which are non-existent and uh, they're, you know, they're spoofing it, they're showing it's there, it's not there. That's the stuff which is highly illegal because you can front run, you can scare the market, you can get the market moving higher, and you're just front running the market, and that is that that is highly illegal. Uh, where's my audible? Okay, the name of the book is, um, one second, sir. I got a lot of great books here. Okay. Okay, it's called Inside the Black Box. You get it on Amazon. It's Inside the Black Box, The Simple Truth About Quantitative Trading. Are you there? Yes. Yes, yeah, so write there. it down. Inside the Black Box, The Simple Truth About Quantitative Trading. The guy's name is Rishi, R-I-S-H-I. And if you Google him, you'll see. He's all over. Uh, and, uh, and his last name is... Uh, N A R A N G. Rishi Narang. And it's a fascinating. I read like the first two chapters. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it was like really something. You know? Hmm. And uh, and he actually works with the SEC and um, um, with, uh, with the New York Stock Exchange because, you know, he's the, he's the master of the game. So he tells them like this, this is what you have to look for in order to catch the bad guys, you know what I'm saying? Because the New York Stock Exchange and the SEC have no freaking clue, because these guys are all rocket science. So um, so that's that's the name of the book, all right? So, okay. the, 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 thank you. Okay, so right now, last quick look here. So this revelation of the 533 was really interesting. It really opened my eyes up a little, uh, or quite a bit too, you know, when we look at the weekly stuff. So let's monitor, given the fact that you uh, uh, three have the, uh, uh, the the 533, keep an eye on the weekly on a nightly basis and see if you see any changes. Because with all, all, all my stuff and everything that I do, sometimes I forget. But uh, remind me uh, if you see some, anything abnormal going on in the weekly, because that's going to be the first signs of a real crack. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll be good. We'll work, we'll work together on that stuff. Um, Looking at the futures right now, I bet you Chinese numbers are already coming out now. Let me just see. Down just a little bit. I sold my ES for a little gain. Okay. And uh, let me see here. We are looking at, uh, tonight is the PMI number. So looking at the calendar here, uh, guys, this is what's coming out tonight from the China side. 
we have um, okay Wednesday 8:30 a.m. PPI. Hmm, interesting Chinese PPI tomorrow Wednesday at 8:30 a.m. Doesn't make sense. Um, tomorrow? Yeah, it's oh. here. Uh, uh, but that's yeah. Well, you know the red star. I'm assuming that's the China thing. Um, consumer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying the Chinese. Right, yeah. It, it, here, this is what I was looking at. Hold on. So there, that's what they're looking at now. Mm, that's that's our PPI. It can be China. Hold on. Cannot be China. Global announcements. That's what I look at. Nope. Tuesday. Fuel calendar. Okay. Now we're talking business. Thank you. There. Tuesday, right? So 9:30 p.m. 9:30 p.m. Eastern time. We have the PMI index. Um, so you have CPI, consumer price index, and we have our producer price index, both coming out at 9:30. So that's when you're going to see the fireworks, you know. Uh, so keep keep an eye on that. Um, and again, you know, we know the levels. So what happens? So that those are two tonight, and then. Um, on our side, we got retail sales. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a, a, a bit of the volatility cluster. Uh, business inventories never carries that much weight. Uh, the beige book tomorrow. Well, I know that. There's a beige book. And how many beige books are coming out? Um, it's the 14th, it's right? Like every other day. I mean, seriously, didn't the beige book just come out? Tomorrow's the 14th, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hope I'm looking at the right year. Yeah. Tomorrow's the 14th. So beige book's coming out. Uh, so that's going to be a nice mover. And then, again, we get hit with China. No, we don't get hit with... Oh, here. We get hit with China then again on Saturday. Those industrial production, GDP, that's the big one, right? 10 p.m. Saturday. So we, don't, we, we, we need to be a little bit light over the weekend. In fact, very light. Because that number, let's say, falls to 6%. You're going to open down 300 points on Monday. So it may almost pay to be a little bit short. I, it pays to be a little bit short, but at the same time, we're going to cover the shorts right away because the weaker China gets, more, more uh, pressure for them to do what they need to do, and they're not stupid. They're already, they're already uh, got the guns lined out what they need to do. So they might be it themselves printing a very low number just to get things whacked out before they go ahead and buy things. You know what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's so that's how the game is played. You know they. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised. Let's say they show a number of six and a half percent. Everyone's like, "Oh my God!" You know, they they were saying seven. Now it's six and a half. So, and then that could be sort of the trough bottom that they're looking at. And then right after that, you know what they do? You know, big announcements. So they got their retail sales. So that's it. So Nine thirty. But they they may have some incentive to crash our market too. Crash? Our, you know, you never know with 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 the uh, with I you know what. What the, the whole South China Sea thing and I don't exactly know, give us a little pain. Yeah, it's very possible. It's very possible. You know, they're like, what the hell? You know, we're gonna go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm totally with you on that, and they might very well do that. Um, okay, so let me run. It was great today. I'm glad we saw that. There's, like I said, in every session that we do, we let's say we pick out two, one or two things that we focus on. And say, so, wow, we didn't see that. That itself is huge learning and things we can apply. Period. You know, and right. yeah. th that's that's really what you know matters to me. Every day I try to find something and say, okay, I didn't know that. Let me try to learn that. So go from there. Okay, guys. So I'll have this recorded because I'll be sending a link. And what I'm doing is I'm not making these private public anymore. Again, like guys, you know, you want to spend my, you know, you use my time, you know, just come in, join the group sessions, all that stuff. So anytime you you need to rehear this. Uh, you just send it to me. It's, it'll be it'll be uploaded as a private video, and then your uh, the minute I put your email in there, you automatically access it. Just remember that. So if we need to review this at any given time, it's always accessible to you. It just won't be accessible to people out there. Okay. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Hey, hey, what's up with this? Um, my my uh, six month um, membership renewed again today, and um, is there is there another program you're you're starting, or should I just stay on six month gold? No, stick to the six months stuff. I mean, oh, another program yeah. meaning, oh, oh, for the live trading stuff. Well, what does that mean? 
No, no, I'm sorry. What was your question? Uh, what does that live trading mean? Is that something else that... The live, uh, I'm, see, I'm, I want to do it right, okay? The live trading simply, you know, in, in the most simplest form means that I'll have a couple of my screens live all day with full audio. So I'll be oh, literally, okay. it'll be like frigging awesome because what's gonna, what it's going to do is I'm just going to bark out what I'm posting out there and it's taking a few seconds for people to, 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 to get it. Not only that, then they have to sort out and look at the chart. You'll be you'll have live access to a bunch of my screens, and and I can especially the 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 the, the algo HFT the bar charts, and you can immediately act on it because you're seeing and I'm screaming out there on this microphone. I'm like guys, I'm going in here. This is what I'm doing, and uh, and then we can look at a certain series of which ones I'm picking up, and uh, so it's literally going to be like you know it's going to be pretty pretty hands on. It is going to be a little bit of work. So I'm, I want to do it the right way. Um, so that's it. And when it comes, yeah. So it's going to be it, it's going to be uh, um, a uh, additional service. But you know, rest assured that um, you guys will be well taken care of, care of. So yeah, it's going to be pretty phenomenal because I can't see somebody who is who wants to just click in and and um, and uh, act on it. And as as they as they hear me say, okay, you know, this 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 is what I'm seeing. I mean, how much? I mean, you know, you can you can. What's the word I'm looking for? You can put such tactical narrative and tactical alerts on a on an audio basis than I can ever do on you know on a written basis, right? So that's really the purpose of it to get people okay. really engaged. But for people who are serious about this, want to do a couple of trades during the day, um, it's going to be live. The screens are going to be live. Cool. So that's that's what the live trading is. Okay. okay. So I just want to do it the right way. So I'm testing out. What would be the best method to do it and, and all that? So probably another week or so, if not earlier. All right. Great. Okay. So no worries, guys. All right. So Scott, uh, thank you. And uh, Jim, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. And, let, and let's keep an eye on the futures around 9:30 or so. All right. Will do. You guys are the best. All the best to your families. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. You as well. You too.